hope everybody has, um, has seen that. Um, if you haven't done the homework, uh, that is okay, in a sense, because um, I will go over it here in a very condensed fashion. First, before we actually go on to the, to the, to the questions that I've asked uh, uh, at the bottom of, of the, the homework. Um, the first thing that is needed is I would just like to do a quick poll to see how many people have actually downloaded the latest and the greatest uh, 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 container that I've uh, put up. So just a yes or no. Okay, the yeses are building up. So this is essentially a container that ended up fixing some of the issues that people were having on Friday. So we are now at 33 yeses and seven noes. Well, as, as long as they have the old one and they managed to make it work the last time, it, it should still be okay for, for today's session. It's just that this cleans up some of the, some of the issues that people may have had. So if, if they had had them and, it, and the issue didn't get resolved with these new docking containers, in principle, it should have. Okay. Okay, we're now pretty steady at 36 yeses and, and eight noes. Okay. Well, the, 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 the other ones can do it on, on the fly, I guess, uh, because the, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to go over at the school. Uh, sorry, why is this not working? Okay, so uh, this was sort of the last slide that I presented on Friday, which essentially goes over the, the exercise that we we're gonna be doing today. And today, basically the goal is to try, try to calculate the most complicated part in an RAA calculation, which is essentially to figure out what the numerator, uh, the cross section in an AA collision is, okay? The denominator is, is, is essentially the same quantity. The only difference is that one is in the medium and therefore requires a hydro simulation and the other one is vacuum and you could just use Pythia for that. You don't even, in principle, you don't even need Jetscape. You can just use plain Pythia to calculate the denominator but you really do need Jetscape for the numerator because it's in a heavy ion collision and you need to have both a hydrodynamical simulation and you also need to have these medium modified uh, modifications that are present in, in Jetscape. Be it in the, on the high energy, high virtuality side uh, or on the high energy, uh, low virtuality side. So high energy, high virtuality is matter and low energy, low virtuality, we have two of them. You have Martini and LBT. Today we will be using uh, LBT and matter uh, and, and this exercise as a combination for the in medium contribution. Uh, okay, so uh, to calculate the cross section of say pions uh, in AA collisions as a function of uh, PT of the pion and uh, del delta PT and delta eta. So you, you, uh, you're gonna bin essentially pions in given their PTs in certain ranges. Uh, we will get into that in a second. Uh, but you'll, um, but there's also a code that sort of already pre-does that for you. Um, and the idea is that the, the first, the, to get to the cross section, what you need to do is you need to first get the multiplicity or the number of pions need to, build, uh, to be binned in, in PT and eta. Uh, actually, there's only gonna be one eta bin. It's gonna co cover the entire eta range and you're really just binning in different PT bins. Um, so this uh, multiplicity, is basically uh, uh, going to be done in several PT hat bins. So what is a PT hat bin? So in a hard scattering in, in, uh, uh, that Pythia gives you, which I'm sort of depicting over here, uh, the propagator in the middle, okay, is sort of free to move around, okay? So it's the transverse momentum of this propagator that is essentially the PT hat bin, okay? And that essentially governs the, uh, uh, so you're, you're gonna give it a certain range, and that essentially governs how, uh, what are the, the ranges of the, of the particles that are coming out, okay? So uh, for every one of the, the PT hat runs that we're gonna be doing, okay, uh, there is an associated cross section and an error to the cross section that the, that the um, Pythia gives you. 
and that's saved in the cross section, uh, cross, cross section underscore dot, cross underscore section dot that file, right? The first number is the, the actual cross section and the second number is the uncertainty, which we will also need to calculate the, 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 the RAA and uh, the cross section of files, okay? So that's sort of the goal. So we will be scanning, um, okay, right. So one thing that I wanted to quickly correct before, before starting. So the last thing that I showed on my uh, uh, meeting on, on, um, on Friday was essentially how to edit the XML files. And I've actually made a mistake in, the, um, in that edit whereby I essentially commented out the entire initial state module. What I really should have done and I, what I wanted really to do is just to comment out the Trento module, right? So the, uh, the idea is that the initial state module, you can either, either do a Trento calculation or you can read, and read that from the file, okay? So that now we're essentially just reading it from the file as it's uh, given over here. Okay, so that, that, that is one thing that we need to comment out, the initial state. The other thing that we need to comment out of uh, is the pre-equilibrium because uh, we're not gonna be running it and we, we already have a hydro on disk, so that is not needed. And of course, you need to comment out this brick portion. Uh, brick basically means that you have a, a block of QGP, so to speak, that is not moving, that is sort of static, and, a, and that exists at a fixed temperature. Uh, that is not really what we're going to be using. Either that, or we can use a simple Brioken expansion. But e in both cases, we're not going to be using any of that. We will actually be using a fully realistic hydrodynamical simulation that is uh, found also in, the, uh, in this folder over here in the, under examples. Um, so yeah, this is really a, fully, a full hydrodynamical simulation in the sense that all of the parameters have been tuned to reproduce experimental observables, soft observable that Shun was talking about on Monday or on Tuesday. Tuesday or is, is he was, yeah, anyways, he was after James. So it, it would have been Wednesday and Thursday, yes. Um, so this is a fully tuned hydro, and not only that, it's also at a high resolution hydro simulation, which means that this is the type of simulation if you really wanted to do an actual calculation of Jetscape, you would need something like this, okay? Um, and the rest is, is, is uh, as, as it was before, okay? This is, this is, so this is in the Jetscape user XML, so if that wasn't clear. So now the idea is, I will quickly like to go over the homework. However, because I've, this, uh, I've asked to do 500 events, which requires uh, 15 minutes or so. And I also uh, asked you to do four PT hat bins. So the 15 times four is what, maybe that's an hour. It's a little bit long because I really want to want to get onto the hands-on session. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go over this, but at a much reduced resolution just so uh, everybody can, can finish uh, everything uh, in a, a short amount of time. So in principle, with, with 40 events, this should take a few minutes most uh, to finish. So the first thing that I would like, like you guys to do is to, once you are in the Docker container, okay, to go into the config, uh, uh, Jetscape config, and open up using your favorite editor here, I've just presented Vim, uh, the Jetscape user XML, and the first thing that I would like you to do is actually change this number up above here and change it down to 40. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a few minutes, uh, a minute or two. And uh, after that, I'm gonna check up and then give you the, 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 uh, the rest of the instructions. Uh, well, actually I can give it to you immediately because it's not that difficult, right? So once you have changed this number here in the Jetscape user XML, then you can just save and quit uh, the, the, the user XML and essentially make four copies of the XML uh, as follows. And then in the next slide, I'll essentially show you what, what, what we're gonna be putting in, inside of these guys. So I'll give you a minute or two and then um, take it from there.
Okay. It has been about a minute. Uh, how are we doing? Have the people managed to edit the, uh, the XML file? Please answer yes or no in the poll. The yeses are coming in, the bug. Okay, so by the way, uh, yes. there is one request uh, for you to go slower. Okay. Okay. And I see there's one request to go to the breakout room. So we're now at 33 yeses and one no. Okay. And the yeses are still coming in. So I, I think it's just okay. maybe a question of uh, time. Of time. Yeah, okay. That's fine. We're at 44 yeses and one no. Okay. So we're getting okay. close to almost half the class. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Okay, so the next step uh, is, uh, okay, before we go on to the next step where I believe we're gonna be, uh, the next step is going to be changing the PT headbands. I wanted to make a, a few comments as to why we will be using more than one PT headband. So here, basically, these file names are going to be the different PT headbands that we're going to be using. Okay, so the, the, the 100 and 125 are going to end up being the minimum and the maximum, respectively. So the idea is that because we're doing a small number of samples over here, or even in the homework where I did uh, this number was at 500, uh, the cross section for any of these uh, uh, high energy scatterings is actually a steeply falling function. So in order to be able to sample this steeply falling function properly, uh, in, any, in any of the, the, the PT headbangs, the, the, best, the best way to proceed, given the, the small number of statistics that we have, is essentially not to, to, to generate one bin that goes from 100 to 200 GV, but to break it out into smaller PT headbands in such a way that you are ensuring basically that you're sampling all parts of the distribution. Um, in principle, if we were to throw at, uh, um, you know, let's say, 100,000 samples from 100 to 200, then these smaller PT headbands wouldn't really be necessary because with uh, 100,000 samples, you can really uh, 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 figure out what the distribution is actually doing. But uh, with fewer and fewer samples, of course, to sort of ensure that you have uh, sampled all of the, the, the regions of the, the, the underlying uh, distribution, um, you, you want to really break it out into smaller PT headbands in such a way that you can do a better job at uh, figuring out that you've really sampled the kinematics uh, correctly. So the next step is essentially to uh, change two things. To, to number one is to change the, the, the name of the, um, the, of the file here. So this is the output cross-section file. Um, so now we're basically going to be adding in the minimum and the maximum values. So that's from 100 to 125. The same thing for the test.out. So the cross section, as I said, is a file that, that has the, the cross section for a particular PT had been. Uh, and uh, that's the first number. The second number is going to be in that file is the uncertainty. Uh, whereas here, this is going to essentially, the test out is going to generate the entire profile of the, the entire shower, starting from parent, that ends up going into matter and LBT, all the way down to all of the daughters. Okay. That's what's saved in test.out, okay. So uh, in addition to that, 
uh, we will be generating uh, two more. So we will, we will be changing the minimum and the maximum value for the PT hat from 50 to 70, written over here, to 100 and 125. Okay. So once you've ed uh, uh, edited the Jetscape user 100 to 125 XML file by making these modifications here, okay, then you can just sleep, simply close the file and do the same modifications in uh, the other three files that we've created. So the goal here is essentially you will end up with four different Jetscape user XML files at the end. Uh, these three here and the one at the top, which will, will then basically run in sequence. Okay, so at this point, uh, I will pause and I will let everybody some time, two minutes, let's say, to, uh, to do this. Okay, it has been two minutes. Uh, how are we doing? So if you've managed to finish this, click on yes. Otherwise, click on no. A budget? We're at 28 yeses and one no. Okay. 31 yeses, 32. It's, it's coming up. Okay. The person who's having trouble, can you post your questions in the Slack? Please, yes. And so I, maybe I didn't go over this because we've been going over this every day, but you know, if you have questions, please, please post, post them in the Slack and you will, you know, from the looks of it, you will get an immediate response. Um, and if your question is still not answered, uh, then raise your hand in the Zoom and then we will get to your question. We had 35 yeses. Okay. I think this is as much as we had before when I uh, decided to uh, to go to the next. So I think I will do so as well. Okay, so this I'm going to leave you a lot more time to run because the idea is the following. Okay, so what we will do is we now we will run in the first instance uh, Jetscape for these four XML files. Okay, this will in principle generate 
the test out and the cross section. Okay, so that's essentially the, 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 what we will need. Then we will copy over those files uh, onto Matter LBT results, which is also visible outside of your Docker container because we mapped it in the beginning. Uh, the, this container, if I, I can go back into the, the, to the main, uh, um, into the first page if you, if you guys need me to. But in principle, if you loaded up your Docker container correctly, uh, this folder here was mapped outside of the Docker container. So copying these uh, over essentially ensures that even when you close the Docker container, everything is still there. And then, uh, still being, so this is essentially in, you are in the build directory. So still remaining in the build directory, we will run final state hadrons on, on these uh, test.out files. And what this will, will do is that we'll go through the entire list of the event uh, that is stored. So this is essentially a test out is an entire Jetscape event. And this will go through the entire event and only pick out the, the, uh, the, the hadrons that are, gonna, that are in the final state. So these are the guys really that we need when we want to calculate RAA or the cross section, the numerator of RAA, which we're doing today, which is the cross section. Okay. And then the last thing we will do again is to copy over these final state hadrons into this, this, this folder that is accessible from outside of the container. Okay. So that those are the steps. And now the first thing is to essentially run Jetscape uh, four times success sequentially. And uh, yeah, go ahead and, 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 and run and start with the first uh, with the first guy, right here. Should take about fifty seconds to a minute to run per um, per uh, per uh, PT had been. So I, I don't know about other people. I'm having a really hard time trying to find your mouse on the black background. Okay, so okay. I think if you move your mouse a lot, it will become larger or something. Yeah, yeah. Or use a laser. Thank you. Yes. Right. So the the idea is to uh, generate four runs in inside of the build directory, uh, and uh, each and every one of those, depending on how fast your for your computer is, uh, at least when I tested it on my computer, it takes about fifty seconds per run. So in about four minutes to five minutes, you should in principle be done with, uh, with all of this. So I'll give you guys four minutes. And um, after that, I'll ask if uh, there are any questions.
Goiko, are you watching the Slack space at all? Yeah, I am. I am. Seems like some people need to go uh, go into a breakout room. Okay. Yeah, I'm suggesting some of the, the participants to go into the background room because they have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chuck, Chuck, Chuck should Chuck should be able to take care of this. Should I assign them to breakout rooms? Yeah. So that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. If if they want to go to a, to 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 get help, they should go in and get and get help. And it seems that there's uh, three or four of them that are, they're having the same issue. Should they should you can put them in the same breakout room. Answer those questions like this. Okay, uh, have those students been uh, assigned to the breakout rooms or? Yes, they have been assigned. Uh, and okay. I think they, they are, the three of them are already in the breakout room, yes. Very good, very good. So I've answered one more question in the meantime. Okay, so uh, in principle, let me see how much time has elapsed. Yeah, in principle, you should be done with uh, the very first run here. Uh, then you can just simply copy the events over. That should take seconds because only 40 events have been generated. So that shouldn't take uh, a very long time to copy. And then immediately you can start on working on the, the second step here, which is to generate final state hadrons. I'll give another four minutes or so but I don't think it's going to take that long because the, 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 the most complicated piece, the most the computationally demanding piece is to um, generate the actual full event. Getting the final state hadrons is uh, very, very quick, given that we only have a handful of events, 40 events that is. Uh, if you had hundreds of thousands of events, then this could take uh, tens of minutes to, to fully finish. But that's not go, go, yes. You have to tell me a time to stop and start the recording. Okay. okay. So uh, once we are uh, once we are done with this section here, then we can stop for the for the first. Uh, um, I'm going to put my laser pointer. Yes. Then we will stop the recording for the first time. The reason uh, is that this entire section here is is doing the the the, the homework that uh, some of the people did over the weekend. Um, so this is for the people who haven't, who haven't managed to do it, to do it now. Okay. So after this, everybody in principle should be caught up and then uh, should be on the same page. And then, uh, uh we can, uh, at the end of this, we will, we will stop recording and start recording the new, uh, the, the w w what is new for today, basically. Okay. So while this is, um, while, while I'm, uh, waiting for people to do the, to run the final state hadrons and also, of course, copy everything into the uh, into the uh, matter LBT results folder. 
I will go on on Slack and see what's happening there. Okay. So, how many people have done, uh, have finished doing the uh, final state hadrons? I mean, answer yes or no into, uh, into the poll. The yeses are building up. Uh, okay. We're at 20, 22 right now. One, okay. one no. Twenty-five yeses and two noes. Okay, I'll give him another minute or two. I'll 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 I'll, I'll try answering questions on, on on Slack in the meantime. How are we doing in terms of yeses and noes? Has anything changed? Uh, 
27 yeses <clears throat> and three noes. Okay. So I, so I, I get the feeling that there's a, there's a, some people are beginning to fall behind. Um, and so maybe um, you're gonna show, uh, make plots and stuff soon or? No. Um, or, or, or go over what, what they should, or maybe just show your, uh, um, your uh, terminal. You know, oh. just, just just to go over the steps again, just just okay. in case. Yeah. Okay. So then we can. I guess we can stop recording. Uh, well, I mean, let me stop sharing here. Okay, I'll stop recording. Okay.